everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. If y'all don't mind, can we just celebrate God today for his goodness and his mercy toward us? Amen, y'all. We are here today to celebrate God for the life of Georgette Greer, right? If you knew Georgette, one thing we knew, it wasn't nothing quiet about Georgette. We're her feisty self, right? So we are here today to to celebrate God for for the blessing that he allowed us to um, um, experience her, right? And to also encourage her children, to encourage her family, right? To know that like God, um, God did not abandon you, right? He's with you every step of the way. Now, I want to tell y'all something right out of the right out the gate, right? Sister Georgette, right, was a faithful member here at Faith Community, right? She loved her church and she loved Jesus, right? And every opportunity that she got to celebrate the Lord, like like you couldn't sing a song without her clapping, you couldn't preach a sermon without her saying preach it right? Um, to, the, to, to the day the Lord took her home, right? We visited her, prayed with her, all of those different things. So we want you guys to know today that as you mourn her, right? Um, mourning is great, right? But, but, but God is amazing in that we have the privilege to experience her life. Amen. We're going we're gonna to carry um, the order of service as it's printed in Um, in our program today. Um, First, we will have a song from our faith community worship team. Right after that, we're going to have Old Testament scripture and New Testament scripture from Pastor Robert Lloyd, uh, lead pastor of Calvary Bible Church here in St. Louis. And then right after that, we're going to call Reverend Tim Nelson up to lead us in a word of prayer. Y'all, let's carry it that way and let's celebrate God together as we Um, as we remember him for the life of Sister Georgette Greer. Faith Community. Amen. I guess I should say, since we in the house of the Lord, praise the Lord, saints. All right, all right, I got a couple of people. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen, amen. It is an honor and a privilege to honor my sister uh, in this way and seeing some of her favorite songs. If you don't know nothing about Sister Georgette E-T-T-E Greer, she loved her Heavenly Father and she affectionately called him Daddy. And so these were just some songs that she really enjoyed and the last songs that we sang with her when we went to her house to just fellowship with her. So we ask that you just uh, bear with us as we sing a few songs for you. Amen? Amen. Who I am. 
That's Job chapter 19, and I'll begin at verse number 23. And it reads as follows. I wish that my words were written down, that they were recorded in a scroll, or were inscribed in stone forever by an iron stylus and lead. But I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the end he will stand on the dust. Even after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh will I see God in my flesh. And I will see him myself. My eyes will look at him, and not as a stranger. My heart longs within me. My New Testament passage to share with you this morning comes from John chapter 3, verses 16 and verse 17. And it reads as follows. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That is John 3, 16 and verse 17. God bless you and strengthen the family. Good morning. Thank you all for coming on uh, such short notice. For all of my fraternity brothers that are here from New Kai, for my friends that have come, um, and family members as well who are, who've been impacted by this in such a way. Um, there was a poem by Langston Hughes called Mother to Son. If you get time in your spare time to read that. So let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we come in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for the celebration of life of my mother, Georgette Greer. Lord, we ask that in your special way and that in your special time, that God, you comfort our hearts and that you lead us, God, in the right direction and in the right way. For earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. For we are never alone because, God, you are with us. Your presence is everywhere. We thank you, God, that even in our deepest despairing moments, God, you are there. Even at times like these, for those who don't have a mother, You've been a mother for the motherless. And you've also been a father for the fatherless. So, Father, even through our difficult days, even through our trials, our triumphs, our letdowns, our fall downs, even when we trip and fall, God, you are there to catch us. Even through our frailties, even through the times that we messed up, even through the times that we've blown it, God, you've been there all the time. You have loved us beyond uh, comprehension and recognition. You have loved us in spite of who we are. That God, even in our downing moments, even in the times, God, when we are needing a helping hand, God, you're there. As if the, the poem that says, when there was only one set of footprints in the sand, it is at that time when you carried us. God, we ask right now for guidance, we ask for your blessings. We ask for your spirit to lead us, to help us bind together as a family, to help us come together, to remove out our, our differences, help put those things in check that need be. God, we are depending upon you for everything and in everything life existing because of you. We thank you for your son Jesus who died on the cross for our sins, who shed his blood that we would have right to the tree of life. And that, God, we know that we don't deserve it, but, Lord, you through your son 
have blessed us with it. In the book of 1 Thessalonians 4.15, I believe it said that, those who die in you, God, will not be prevented by those who are yet still alive. Those will rise first. And, Lord, we trust in your word in that. We thank you that one day, God, Mama will rise up from the grave. At your beckoning call, she will hear, she will answer, and she will respond. We thank you, God, for all those, God, who are present in this place. We thank you, God, for those who will bring the preach word, the gospel, that will bring healing for our souls, that will counsel our minds and our hearts and give us peace and move us from beyond this place, but never from your presence. We thank you for Pastor Bird and Pastor Lloyd and for all those who have gathered here today under the weak sound of my voice that I may decrease, that you may increase. In Jesus' name we pray. We thank God and amen. 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 At this time, we, we're going to have a selection by Simone Phillips. Let's say amen as she comes. Bless the head of my life and our God to the leadership of this church, to this congregation, and to this family, and to my friend. I'm grateful to stand here before you. What I can say is that when I walked in, there's an atmosphere, an atmosphere that is generated and created by believers. There's an atmosphere of praise, an atmosphere of faith in this place, even in the midst of your grief. And so I'm grateful to stand here before you, and I pray that this little song, I'm just going to do a verse and a chorus of a hymn, and I pray that it lifts you, that it encourages you, and it continues to feed you as you walk through your days ahead. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back at Cal. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never. For it reaches <laughs> on the hard days, y'all, to the highest mountain. Yes, if you know it, come on. And it flows to. the blood, y'all. Oh, the blood that will give you strength from day to day. It will It's power 
God bless you. God, again, for her, for leading us well today. Let's take y'all just a couple minutes to read over the life reflections as our musician plays softly. lived is the thing that really sticks out to me the most that I can really honestly say that was that was true about Sister Georgette is that she fully gave her life to the Lord right and I am I'm grateful to to have been able to experience that in her life y'all we, we want to open um, open up y'all for those those of you who may have a memory that you would like to share um, from, uh, about Sister Georgette, right? We want to we wanna open it up for you. Um, I'm going to ask if you will keep it at one minute, right? I am going to set a time or two. <laughs> but, but I'm going to ask that, like, if, if any of you want to come and just share something, um, a great memory that you have of her um, to encourage the family or to encourage those who love her, and that was a great opportunity for you to do so. I'm a little shy. Um, so I am Crochet. I am um, AKA Gramsie. Um, so my grandma, um, I played sports as a little girl, um, basketball, flag football, track, you name it, I did it. Um, so she was in attendance to pretty much all my games, like 90% of the time, always taking me to get the basketball shoes, um, anything I needed, any advice, she will talk to me. Our favorite thing, she was very like competitive. <laughs> so we used to do um, the map, you know, where is Asia? Where is, you know, this and that continent? We used to play jacks. Um, she was the jack champion, but I did win before she left. <laughs> but I will always give her that title because she's the one who taught me how to play jacks. And going through her things, like when I was in Florida, I'm from Florida, so, uh, we all travel, you know, from here with my Uncle Tim. Um, so she was always over the phone with me. I'm looking for the jacks. I'm looking, Gramsie. I know I packed it somewhere. It's somewhere. But when you get down here, Gramsie, uh, you're going to have to find them. I'm like, okay. So then, you know what? Today, I'm looking for her earrings or necklace. There it was, the jacks. In her room, in the drawer, pushed all the way under back. And I'm like, well, there we go, Grandma. <laughs> I found the jacks. I got what I wanted because that's really what I wanted to, to come home um, with was those jacks. Because I knew once we do leave to go back to Florida, you know, uh, whatever happens to the house or maybe the stuff are going to get thrown out, I wouldn't have those jacks again. So those jacks, literally, memories. So not only that, but um, just a, a awesome, God-fearing woman. She taught me so much. Um, Talk to my husband all the time. 
Um, I remember he's not here. He's back at home doing work with the children and all that. Um, but I know if he was here, he would say, man, I will speak to her. I, he would, they would have to push me out so they can have their own conversation. <laughs> They're like, she's like, Ramsey, I want to speak to him. You go ahead. <laughs> and I'm like, all right. But she was, um, I'm really going to miss her, um, her smile, her laugh, everything about her. She's so, such a beautiful woman, as you can see. Um, but yeah, I mean, I could keep, oh, you said a minute. I'm sorry. Um, anywho, that's my grandma. <laughs> and I'm Gramsie. <laughs> All right. I'm so sorry. Oh, you good. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else? I want to thank my nephews, my nieces, and my best, my big sisters. Um, I knew Tasha for a long time, and I had got the news from my nephew because my sister was the sweetest person that I know. I'm the baby sister of all, but I'm praying for Tim and my family that we all grow closer than we all have been. And I thank God for Minister Lloyd because I knew them. And I love all of you guys because, you know, my sister was the sweetest woman I know. Because when I got the news, I wrote that I couldn't take it. Tim, I wanted you to keep your heads up, please. Hello, everybody. I want to give honor to God, who's head in my life. I'm going to miss her dearly. Oh, we done had our battles now, don't get me wrong. <laughs> she was stubborn, I was stubborn. <laughs> but overall, we loved one another. And she didn't mind speaking her mind, because that's how this family is. Yeah. Uh, I remember the last, not the last conversation I had with her. Um, she wanted some food, some Chinese food. Well, in, 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 in Missouri, the Chinese, especially where we live, they're not open on Mondays and Sundays. So me and William, my nephew, her son, I mean, we wrote some everywhere. So I said, I'll tell you what you do. I'm going to give my nephew some money, and he can get you some Chinese food Tuesday. You won't <laughs> get it today. <laughs> but she did. I did get her a tripe that she wanted. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, you ain't give me time to, to eat with you. She had <laughs> ate that tripe for her. <laughs> but it's something that she wanted. And believe it or not, I raised her. Mm. She was one of my little sisters. I raised her. And uh, oh, we fought. <laughs> then we made up. Mm -hmm. Then she scratched me. Then I scratched her. <laughs> but overall, I love my sister. Mm -hmm. I'm a lover. My condolences go out to her kids, her grandkids. And I love you guys. Have a safe trip. Tim, I miss you. And I want to let you know that y'all and William, you did a wonderful job. Love you guys. Good afternoon, family and friends. Uh, <clears throat> I wasn't going to say anything. I just wanted to sit back and just let the family do it, but uh, I'm like Georgette's second oldest nephew, 
So saying that, I probably knew her before every <laughs> the children and everything. I kind of grew up with my aunt, uh, like a little bitty kid up under her, and I love. I think uh, when it come to breakfast food, she was the best in the world. You know, I was a kid and I just couldn't stop eating her rice and sausage and bacon because this woman can cook the best breakfast in the world. But I want to say, uh, I've never in my life called her Georgette. I always called her kiddo, <laughs> you know, because that's what I know her by. But uh, I believe she's in a better place. Uh, and I hope and pray that uh, everybody uh, just keep their heads up and stay strong. And uh, uh, some of you cousins uh, probably don't know me because some of you are younger. I'm one that's like around the corner from 60. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, you can catch me my, on Facebook. My number's there. Uh, you can call me. I'm here in St. Louis and need to know where to get you something or get around. All at me, I'm Reggie, all right? I'm the one they say cool, hip, all that, but <laughs> still, I have love in my heart for my family, and uh, I thank you all for listening. Uh, I want to first say thanks, everybody, for coming out, um, family, friends. I want to say um, thank you for your prayers, you know, your hugs, your condolences. Um, my family, we really do appreciate it. I particularly want to thank these two people. Like, long before my mom was sick, they've been very supportive. This church has been very supportive. She's, she's needed a place, a sanctuary. She would call me over and say, well, hey, baby, could you go over and watch Willie? I said, well, that's not a problem because we watch football. <laughs> so I'd hang out. So again, thank you, thank you. Um, I wanna first say, um, I've only had a few loves in my life. The mother of my three daughters, the mother of my brother and my sister, and the mother of my mother and my five aunts. Now notice, with the exception of my brother, all those people were women. And um, it's just between you and me, they all crazy. <laughs> <coughs> I don't mean crazy like straight jacket. I just mean bulldogs in the skirt. Every one of them. And I, when I say every one, well, actually, most are about right there. Now, growing up, um, this, this story is going to probably make some people understand it, but some may not, whatever. I never knew my mom's first name until I was maybe five or six. Like my cousin just said, everyone called her kiddo. Everyone. Um, of course, we just called her mama. Now, growing up, you couldn't call your mom by her first name. See, now, time out might be something new to some folks. Time out was how long you got knocked out for calling your mama <laughs> by her first name. My folks didn't play that. So I go to school once, and I have to return a card, and uh, it's got my mom's name on it. And the teacher says, oh, your mom has a pretty name. And I'm like, mama? Everybody got to want a name. She was like, no, silly, Georgette. And I was like, what? Somebody didn't let me in on a military secret. <laughs> so I'm like, I wasn't going to unpack that and go home yet because I hadn't got my weight up yet. I couldn't just talk to mama any old way. I couldn't just say that. So I had to hold that in until I got older and told her, hey, I know your name. <laughs> <laughs> With that being said, that gives you uh, also her strength. Bulldog in the skirt. And I'll say this. Nobody knew Georgette like I knew Georgette except I didn't know Georgette, I knew mama. And one time, uh, I'm at her house, we're having breakfast. I'm just eating cereal, she's eating whatever. And I'm used to eating 2% uh, milk. And uh, I'm like, man, I don't know what's in this, this soy, buttermilk, something, you trying to kill me, what is this? And she look at me and she's like, well, in the Lord and manna from heaven and, and such and such and such. And I'm like, mama, after two minutes, I said, are you gang banging for Christ over Kellogg's? <laughs> we're just having cereal, what's the? Bulldog in a skirt. So I'm like, all right, mama. 
Now, of course, she looked at me and was like, eat your cereal. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I couldn't say it enough. Of course, I love my mom. It was one thing she mentioned. Um, she had gotten sick, but wasn't close to passing yet. And she mentioned, she said, well, Lamont, I don't know what, um, I'm not afraid. I'm, 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 I'm ready to go. She said, because I'm, I'm, I'm tired. She said, but I'm not hurt. She said, I ain't never had any pain. She said, I, I feel uncomfortable and whatnot, but I'm, I'm okay. I'm ready. She said, but you know what I'm concerned about? When I get to heaven, will I get to see Willie again? So here she is still pining over her, her man, as she called him. And that's got to be the hottest thing for a lady to sit here. Man, that's my man. <laughs> man, that make a guy feel real good about himself, you know? You know, my pops, he laying there like, mm-hmm. But, 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 baby, my guy, again, bulldog in a skirt. And lastly, I remember um, I'm sitting in a room with moms, and we're watching some TV, and um, um, I'm feeling some kind of way. I'm kind of crying, and um, she says, well, come here, come here. And I go and sit by her, and um, she grabbed me by my hand and whatnot, and she's, um, she's asking me, well, hey, what, what, what you crying for? She's like, well, don't cry for me. And I says, well, um, I ain't really crying for you, mama. And she said, well, what you crying for? And I said, I'm crying for me. I'm selfish right now. And I don't want you to leave me. <laughs> you know what this woman did? She grabs my face. She's rubbing my tears. And she kissing me all over my face like I'm a little boy again. And then she goes on. She's praying. But she's comforting me. <laughs> Look, y'all. I'm fat, I'm, I'm gray, I'm bald, I got chronic back problems. But far as I know, I ain't dying. This woman's laying here dying, and she's comforting me. I like the loss of my mind. I'm sitting here, I'm hugging her, she's squeezing me. Actually, I had to tell her, Mom, you got to let me go. And she's like, what's wrong? I said, I think you broke a rib. Where you, where you get your man strength from? Man, you sick. What's wrong with you? She, of course, she started laughing and said, get out, go get me some water, and then come sit down. Bulldog and a skirt, y'all. You don't know George yet like I knew George yet. Because I didn't know George yet, but I did know my mama. Thank y'all. Hey, man, we, we, we take one more. Anybody? Look, I got my support system coming on up. Make sure I'm all right. Yeah, that's my sis Gigi right there. You know, Georgette Greer, but every now and again, I told her Gigi stood for God's gangster because she was a bulldog in a skirt. But that was my girl. And uh, I'm so grateful that God loved me so much that he allowed me the opportunity to have a Georgette Greer in my life. So many amazing memories of her, she definitely loved her man. And whenever she talked about him, she said, that's my man. I prayed five long years for that man. That's my man right there. And even in doing that, how she loved and cared for Willie, she helped me to be a better wife. We left and I said, uh, I thought I loved you, but uh, I think I just like you a little bit because uh, that's a whole new level of love. I mean, she would flirt with him with a little tight dress. Baby, you like what I got on, you know. Yeah, you know, she was thicker than a snigger now. But that was my girl. And uh, she was. She loved to cook. As soon as she came to the church, first thing she did, can I cook for y'all? The Lord putting it on my heart. This woman made some dressings, some greens, mashed potatoes, some uh, uh, ribeyes, and put it in a styrofoam container that couldn't even close. I was eating on that thing for four days. I tell you, boy, she can cook now, now but, but, you know, she could burn some bread now. She could definitely burn some bread. Uh, she went to teach me how to make cornbread on top of the stove. And uh, <laughs> uh, let's just say uh, when it got done, I served it to my family, and I said, it's a new recipe I'm trying. It's called uh, smoked cornbread. Uh, the flavor going to be a little different, but, uh, you know, I put a lot of honey and butter on there. Y'all going to like that. It's smoked cornbread. They said, oh, this is this some good stuff right here. 
you know, but that was my girl. We, we would laugh and joke all the time. I would take her to her doctor's appointments. If you know, Georgette, Georgette, E-T-T-E. Don't get a name wrong, because the nurse at the hospital messed around and called her Georgetta a couple of times. She said, uh, uh, baby, uh, uh, it's Georgette, E-T-T-E. Ain't no A in my name, baby. She said, oh, I'm sorry, man. That's all right, that's all right, Georgette. And she said, I showed could tell a story, but I, I got plenty of them because she was really something else. That was my sis. But she ain't like pain. And so we was, went to get her eye surgery, and, you know, she had, they had to give her pain meds a few times, a few times. So I'm watching everybody else come out. They all coming out in a wheelchair. I'm looking on the board, waiting on her, you know, number to come up. And I'm like, where is this woman? Lo and behold, who come around the corner, not in a wheelchair, but walking with the nurse like this. Hey, sis, what's going on? I said, what are you doing? She said, oh, I feel real good, sis. I feel real good. I said, what? Everybody else in a wheelchair. And here you come, got to be different, walking. She and befriended everybody back there. Everybody. You know, and it, as soon as it was over, they said, you're going to have to take it easy now. You can't, you know, you just had surgery on your eye. Take it easy. You may not see things well. We get in the car, she say, uh, uh, sis, uh, can we go to White Castles? I want, uh, uh, a double cheeseburger, no pickles, no onions, uh-huh, and, and uh, a root beer. I say, all right, sis, now, we're going to go, but you just sit in the car. No, 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 I can come on out. I can come on out. I say, Lord, all right, you can come out, but when we go in, you sitting down. Okay, sis, all right, sis, all right. We go in, she sit down. I say, I got to go wash my hands. I go wash my hands, come out, open the door. She right there, bang. Hey, sis, what you, what you doing? You had one job, one job, sit down. She said, well, I wanted to wash my hands, too. But that was my sis. Yeah. That was my sis, you know. And I loved her. I loved her dearly. And I'm a mister. She was my ride or die. She was. She was my laugh partner. She was my prayer partner. She was my encourager. She was my, my gangster. Because, you know, we all got that side. And, you know, when you a little hood, you know, you, you just connect. But she loved the Lord. She loved her family. One of the most precious memories was when all of the sisters got together and had dinner. That really, really warmed her heart, and it was just one of the best things. But she knew the Lord, and she did. She was ready. She called and said, I'm ready to go. And so I'm just, I'm grateful for the time that I got to know my sis. She could have worked for Brinks the way she had that house secured, though. But, uh, I mean, her own system. You know about it. You should have seen the fire department trying to get up in there. Who knew it would take the fire department, the police, and the paramedics to break down the door? Because this woman got two folding chairs up against the door. I said, y'all ain't getting in there. But that was, that was Georgette. Georgette Greer, a.k.a. kiddo, a.k.a. mom, a.k.a. my sis. I love y'all. Thank y'all for allowing me this time. You said what? I get 30 seconds. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. I only need about 20 because uh, um, Brother Lamont told me I, I won't win. So if y'all know, know who we're talking about today, I just want to say this one thing about her because Tracy said a whole lot. <laughs> My sister told me, hey, you know, <laughs> for real, I'm Italian. Her favorite place to eat was Favali's? Favaza. Favaza. On the hill. Yep. On the hill. So anytime we would drive near and see the sign on the hill, see, sis, that's what I'm talking about. See, that's my people. That's my people. I'm Italian. I told you I'm Italian. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Y'all, um, I want to tell you that um, as, as the faith community worship team comes, I want you to know that... Um, Sister Georgette was a blessing to not only me as a pastor, but to me as a husband and a father as well. She came to our house, stayed the night several times, and I I'd never heard of jelly cake until Sister Georgette. I was like, what in the world is jelly cake? Tess, remember that jelly cake? We like, what is this? 
right? Uh, but Brother Anthony been eating it ever since. As a matter of fact, Anthony took it and didn't even share it. He was like, she made this for me. No, she made it for us. She calls me and she says, Pastor, now I want you to stop by my house. I got something for you. Only for me to get there and she made me my own pan of dressing. Right? My family for Thanksgiving. She made us like six sweet potato pies. Like that's who she was. She was caring. Right? I never would have thought, Tim that when I was 16 years old running around Friendly Temple, that I would meet your mother. Meeting your mother who, in many ways, changed me for the better. Right? So on behalf of Faith Community Bible Church family, I want to thank you all for allowing us to share her, allowing us to experience. Faith Community, let's celebrate God for this family, for who she was to us. Um, faith community worship team you guys can come at this time and then we will um, move forward within our eulogy so my sister loved to worship the Lord as y'all know and uh, But with all this new music that come out and all this nice and running to the Father and you a good, good Father and you deserve it and I can only imagine, it was nothing like a good old hymn, amen. And she told me often stories about when she first came to Christ and how they gave her a hymn. She didn't know none of those songs, but she sang all them songs in the hymn book and she really enjoyed it. She enjoyed it. And so we're just going to close out just singing a, a couple of hymns to my sister, amen? Amen. So feel free to join along with us if you know them, because I know she will. also preparing the food for y'all, so he ran from upstairs back to downstairs, so when y'all eating and smacking your fingers, you can appreciate his effort in running back down here and trying to catch his breath, amen? All right, amen. Let's
with her soul. Can we just one more time say it is well? It is well. It is well with my soul. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Allow me for a moment to draw your attention to the gospel according to Luke chapter 23. I want to begin, if I can, reading verse 32. Luke chapter 23, beginning at verse 32. Two other criminals were also led away to be executed with him. When they arrived at the place called the skull. They crucified him there along with the criminals, one on the right and one on the left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they are doing. And they divided his clothes and cast lots. The people stood watching and even the leaders were scoffing. He saved others. Let him save himself if this is God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him. They came offering him sour wine and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. An encryption was above him. This is the king of the Jews. Then one of the criminals hanging there began to yell insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? If so, save yourself and us. But the other answered, rebuking him, Don't you even fear God since you are undergoing the same punishment? We are punished justly because we're getting back what we deserve for the things we did. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly, I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. Bow your heads with me and let's pray. Father, we thank you that God, you're in control of all things and you know what's best. God, as I eulogize my dear sister today, God, I pray that her desire for her family to know you, to grow in you, to mature in you, that we will see your hand at work. I pray, God, that you will comfort them, that, Lord, you will wipe every tear from their eye, but let them remember that she's in your hands. I pray that you let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my strength and my redeemer. This prayer and all of our prayers we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just for a couple minutes, y'all, looking at Luke um, chapter 23, verses 32 through 43. I want to tag this if I can. Man, just give me paradise. Just give me paradise. When you think of paradise, like what is the first thing that comes to your mind? When you think about paradise, is it something that just really gives you life, that gives you some sort of peace? And most of us here today, if, if asked, right, how do you view paradise or what comes to your mind? What do you want out of this life? Many of us will be honest and say, I want to live my best life now. Many of us would, would probably have a little, little, little bit Gigi in us and we just want the finer thing. Many of us would probably even suggest that um, I just want money, right? Quoting that famous commercial, Sister Cassandra, it's my money, and I need it now. Sister Georgette, one of her favorite places, y'all, as we've already shared, was for Vasa's on the Hill. And I remember, right, when we, I, I said, you know what, sis, um, we want to take you to dinner. Where do you want to go? 
She said, well, now look at her. <laughs> There's a spot called for visors. I want to go there. I said, all right, we'll take you there. Then her birthday came around, and she still chose this place. So one day I asked her, I said, you pass by these signs on the hill, and, and, and it, it seems to be something that excites you. Like, why do you love this hill so much, sis? Because the food, wasn't, it, it, it wasn't all that. And then she was hip, so it didn't smack past her. I said, no. <laughs> but what did you love about it? She said, well, first of all, you got to know that I'm Italian. <laughs> she said, and because I am Italian, I love Italian. And for some reason for me, it's like paradise. She said, so whenever you want to make me smile, just give me paradise. Honestly, most of us are just like her, just want to experience paradise. What comes to your mind when you think about paradise? Is it a beach? Is it a mountain view? Is it a sunny day? Is it financial freedom? The problem, right, is that when we view paradise, we tend to think that paradise is something that this earth gives. Paradise, yeah, it is a place, but, but paradise is not here on this earth. And I just believe, right, that Sister Georgette, as feisty as she could be, as mean as she could be, and let's just be honest, as hurtful as she could be sometimes, she's experiencing a greater paradise far better than the hill could ever bring. If, if you spend five minutes with her, you know that she loves God. She, anytime she prayed, Andrew, she would say, Daddy. That that tells us, right, that there's, right, this, this view of paradise that, that she has that's far greater than what this world could ever bring. I need you to understand that life here on earth is not paradise. Living here in St. Louis, living in Florida, Chicago, wherever you're from, anywhere on the globe where all of this foolishness is happening, hear this, this is not paradise. Some of you are thinking, well, pastor, you tripping. This paradise for me. This life is paradise for me. But, 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 but watch this. This couldn't be paradise. It couldn't be um, paradise if everywhere we turn, we're seeing some sort of wrong. This isn't paradise because everywhere we turn, chaos seems to be at an all-time high. This world could not possibly be chaos, right, when it's absence of peace. I want you to know that peace is not a thing, but peace is a person. This couldn't be paradise because eventually the food, the, the sustenance that we need to survive, eventually it'll, it'll fade away and we'll be hungry again. This is not paradise because even the cars that we drive will lose value. The houses that we pursue, right, um, will eventually burn fall, right, need repair. This isn't paradise. This earth that we live in is a place of wickedness, a place of depravity, a place of rebellion, a place where everybody wants power, but nobody wants to submit to a higher power. This couldn't possibly be paradise, right, because this is a place, right, where everyone needs a savior. I want you to know that paradise is not the hill. Paradise is not Bank of America. Paradise is not your closest credit union. My friend, paradise is heaven. Paradise is, is spending eternity with the Father. Paradise is resting in God's presence. Paradise is a place, right? Paradise here on earth is a mindset that says no matter what car I drive, no matter how my house is, no matter where I live, just being with God is my heart's desire. Just give me paradise. The question today is that, well, pastor, if paradise is not here, then how do I obtain it? So, pastor, you telling me that everything that I thought was cool was getting me there isn't? 
You're telling me that all of those things that I'm chasing after is only temporary? But how do I obtain this paradise that you're speaking of? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let me tell you how to obtain it. Watch what he says in the text. He says, one of the criminals who were hanging railed at him saying, you are not the Christ. Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him saying, do you not fear God since you're under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed uh, justly for you are receiving the due reward for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Here in this text, Jesus here is assuring one of the criminals on the cross, that when he died, he would be with Jesus in heaven. Now, honestly, y'all, this should bring resolve to our hearts. Why? Because many of us have given up on Jesus. We've given up on Jesus because of the things that we've done, because of the things that we said, or just simply because we think that we aren't good enough. Truth is, you aren't good enough for him. But because of his grace, because of his mercy, even though we aren't good enough, he still desires a relationship with you. Every, like, 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 think about it for a minute. Everything that you've ever done wrong, Jesus is saying, I want to forgive you. I want to be in relationship with you. And the reality is, even if you wouldn't have did that, you still wouldn't be good enough anyway. But he's still saying, come unto me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Hear this. God looks beyond your fault. And meet you at your knees. Jesus, here in his text, is assuring one of the criminals on the cross that when he died, he would be with Jesus in heaven. This promise, y'all, was granted because even at the hour of his death, the criminal had expressed his faith in Jesus, recognizing Jesus um, for who he was. Let me tell you, can you recognize Jesus for who he is? As I read this passage... I couldn't help but to ask, how did this, because I'm just criminal, this lawbreaker, this offender, this villain, this delinquent, this felon, this convict, this wrongdoer, this liar, this cheater, this culprit, this miscreant, this person who is no different from you and I, this sinner, how, I said, did he experience paradise? Can I tell you, even feisty people can experience paradise. We make it hard for people to see Jesus because we hold them to who we think they are when God sees them as someone totally different. Our natural inclination, Tim, is to throw people away when they don't do what we want them to do or when they don't respond the way we think they should respond, right? Um, but we see Jesus is different here. Jesus even allowed this criminal to experience paradise in spite of all of this. How was he able to receive paradise? How was he able to experience this place of exceptional blessedness, this place of permanent happiness, this place of delight? How is a criminal able to get to heaven? We see it right here in this text, number one, right? He was able to experience paradise, right, because he was willing to realize that he was sinking. He realized that he was sinking, right? And let me ask you this. Do, can, can you really see, right, that in your life without Jesus, you just walking around breathing to death? Can you see that life without Jesus, right, you are walking around with your eyes wide shut? He realized that he was sinking in sin after his friend attempted to make a mockery of Jesus in verse 40. He even rebuked his friend. He said, man, do you not even fear God since you're under the same sentence of condemnation? And we are indeed suffering justly for we are receiving justly for our deeds. But hear this. He said, but this man has done nothing wrong. Let me encourage you, let me implore to you today, family, that the first step to dealing with any issue is to realize that there actually is an issue. 
You, you can't deal with the issue if you don't first acknowledge that there is one. This sinner admitted, he admitted that he was a sinner. He admitted that he wasn't perfect. Well, why can't I realize I'm sinking? Because we're too busy walking around thinking that we're the greatest miracle since Miracle Whip. We're walking around thinking that, right, um, that, that, that we are, we are the, the, the greatest blessing since honey wheat bunny bread. But the reality is, right, we are all sinking in sin, far from a peaceful shore, but God's ears is big enough to hear our cry. He's saying, listen, you don't have to sink and drown because I am offering you a life raft. He realized he was sinking. He's saying, man, please, right, I, I got this King Kong, ain't got nothing on me, but I want to bust your bubble. Romans 3 says, none is righteous. No, not one. No one understands. No one seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together they've become worthless. No one does good. Not even one, right? You want to experience paradise? Recognize that you're sinking. Recognize, number one, that you're sinking. Number two, you want to experience paradise. Not only should you realize that you're sinking, but number two, you've got to realize that the only person who's able to save you is Jesus. The only person who's able to pull you out of the muck and mire. The only person who's able to give peace to your life of chaos. The only person who's able to, to keep you from falling is Jesus. We see that he experienced paradise because he knew that only Jesus could get him there. Do you know asking somebody else to make your life better, asking somebody else to bring peace to you, asking somebody else to help get the chaos out of your life is just like driving a car to the grocery store that ain't got no motor in it. But see, what we do is that. We're going around town, life ain't got no motor, but we, we are so desperate to do what we want to do, we begin to Fred Flintstone it. And then when the car won't move, we call on other people to help us. And then when they ain't strong enough, we cuss them out and call their friend. Let me tell you, the only way to experience paradise is through Jesus. He said in verse 42, Jesus, <laughs> I love this, he says, Jesus. When you get to where you're going, when you come into your kingdom, here's what he says, remember me. Jesus, when you get to where you're going, Jesus, when you get to the right hand of the Father, Jesus, when you ascend to the throne that's for you, Jesus, when you get to where you're going, remember me. Hear this. I want to remind you today that there's no shortcuts to Jesus. The only way for us to get to the Father is through the Son. The bad news, y'all, is that we're all sinking in sin, but the good news, hear this, right? The good news, y'all, is that there's a remedy. Because of his love, God did not, he does not desire to leave you in your brokenness. He is not, he does not desire to leave us to drown in our own sin. But Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, came to us and lived a perfect life. Christ came to rescue us. He came to do for us what we could not do for ourselves. He took our sin and shame to the cross, paying the penalty for our sin by his death. Jesus didn't just stay in the grave, but three days later he rose from the grave with all power in his hands. Well, why? For you to experience paradise. Just give me, just give me paradise. After he admitted he was a sinner, y'all, he knew that only Jesus could get him to paradise. This place of exceptional blessedness, happiness, and delight. He knew that only Jesus could get him to the Father. Here's the thing. Well, well, you know, Pastor, I can get myself there. Well, if you can get yourself there, how come you haven't? If you can get yourself there, what's stopping you? If you can get yourself there, why deal with hell here on earth? The reality is we cannot get ourselves there. He admitted, y'all, that he was a sinner. He knew that only Jesus
Jesus had the power to forgive him. And finally, um, uh, he, he, his salvation was affirmed. There's no way that we can not have a relationship with God and think that we're going to spend eternity with him. It's interesting. Because we're set up in a way that we don't want God until we have no other choice. We don't want a relationship with Jesus until all else is lost. But I'm going to tell you, a relationship with Jesus is too sweet that I don't want to wait till I'm broke, busted, and disgusted to be able to give my life to him. He's so great to me, y'all. He's so great to all of us that I want to give myself to him at my full capacity. I don't want to wait till I can't walk, till I can't talk, and till I don't have anything to give to give myself. I just want to give myself to him now. How about this? It's my Jesus, and I want him now. Just give me paradise. He received salvation. His salvation was affirmed. Y'all, hear hear this. I love this. When he, he said to he said, Jesus, when you get to your kingdom, remember me. But what I love here is that Jesus said to him, truly I say to you, today, this day, you shall be with me in paradise. Now, what I love here is that he didn't say to him, Cortez, criminal, you're going to be with me in paradise. He didn't say, cheater, this day you're going to be with me in paradise. He didn't say, man, you killed 60 people. You're going to be with me. No, he says today his name wasn't important. His past wasn't important, right? His mistakes was not important. The only important thing was his destination. He said, today you will be with me in paradise. He was sinking, but he still found a way to demonstrate true faith. Because of that, Christ allowed him to spend eternity with him. I want to tell you this. None of us here today are no different from this criminal on the cross. If we want to spend eternity with Jesus, if we want to experience paradise, We got to understand and admit that you are a sinner. Grasp the fact that the only way for us to get to the Father is through the Son and demonstrate our faith in Christ for salvation. What does this demonstration mean? It means repent and believe. Repent. Turn from your sin and turn to Jesus. Now, believing in the Lord, right, is not only saying it with your mouth, but it's, but it's living it with your heart. It's saying it with your heart, right? When you believe in something, you represent it, right? I'll tell you, um, one of our pastors here at Faith Community, Pastor Baker, loves the Lakers. He believes that they're a good team. I was at his house this past Saturday night, and I saw at least 10 Lakers hats in 50 different colors. He believes that they're a good team. So much so, he reps them everywhere he goes, right? He also liked the Chiefs. Pray for him, right? But he, you you can tell, right? He believes it. Because he invests in it, right? See, I don't have a team. I buy hats for the color, not the team. But he has a team. I was like, man, you like this Tampa Bay hat? He said, nice hat, but it's not my team. He believes in it so much so that he invests in it. He gives himself to it. What if we take that same approach with Jesus to say, you know what? I believe in you so much that Jesus, I want you in my heart in every color. Jesus, I believe in you so much so that every step I take, every move I make, every word I say is going to show that I believe in you. Listen, you got to turn from your sin and turn to Jesus. Repent and believe. Turn from sin and turn to God. Hear this. Hear this. And I'm done, I promise. Hear this. I believe that if Sister Georgette was here today, one of the things she would say is that, Pastor, I just want to be about my father's business. She left her. Lamont will affirm this. She left her praying for the salvation of her loved ones. 
right? I remember, right? I couldn't reach her one day, so. But I'm the guy who said, listen, you're there by yourself, and when I need to reach you, and you don't answer, I need somebody to call. Because I will pull up, knock on door, whatever the case. She said, you call my son Monty. And he'll be able to answer any questions. So one day I called him. I said, hey, uh, is this Monty? He said, uh, who want to know? <laughs> you, you remember he said, I'm sorry, don't nobody call me that but my mama. And I was able to tell him, oh, this Pastor Bird. Oh, what's up, bruh? You... She loved her family. And she wanted everybody to get to know him. So as a plea, I want to tell you this. God is holy. He is righteous. And he will not ignore sin. None of us are perfect. Matter of fact, let me ease your pain. I'm the chief sinner. I ain't perfect. My, the only difference between me and y'all is I got to preach it every week. But God is holy. He's righteous. He won't ignore sin. Man, all of us sinned against God. Therefore, our relationship with God is broken. And we know that anything that's broken needs to be what? And the reality is we can't fix it on our own because if we could, we would have did it a long time ago. Well, how was this broken relationship fixed? It's through Christ, right? Well, what did Jesus do? Every sin you've ever committed, Jesus Christ took it on, right? Now, well, you know, I'm going to tell you something, right? You can lie to me, but you, ain't, you can't lie to him because he saw it, right? The sins you committed is on videotape. It was you. Your fingerprints is all over it. As a matter of fact, you're in the courtroom right now getting ready to be judged for what you did, but Jesus steps up. Can I take the bench? Right? I'm sentencing you to right in the middle of your sentence. Jesus is saying, no, I'll take the sentence for you. Right? Jesus Christ, the righteous, did for us what we could not do for ourselves. Everything that we've ever done wrong, he's taking it on, right? He died for you. He was beat for you, crown of thorns, nails in his hands, nails in his feet for you. Well, what do I do with this? Nothing yet. Just hear the story. He died. An innocent man died. A man who did nothing wrong died. A man who was the only perfect person died on the cross for you. When they pulled him off the cross, y'all, they threw him in a borrowed tomb. I mean, he was the king, right? And they didn't even try, they couldn't even give him his own coffin. But they buried him in a borrowed tomb. And to make sure Sister Nisi, that he ain't come out. They put a stone in front of the grave and said, you know what? He ain't who he said he is. But that speaks to the power of God. Like, I know you think, right, he don't want nothing to do with me because I did this, I did that. Even if you wouldn't have did this or that, you still would have been good enough anyway. But his, he's powerful enough to even remove a stone from the grave. Whatever it is that's keeping you from giving your life to him, the stone is being removed. He rose from the grave with all power in his hands. They pulled the stone back and the tomb was empty. It's because he rose from the grave. Well, what do you do with this information? You turn from your sin and turn to him. Am I saying that it's going to be easy? No. But what I am saying to you is that it's worth it. It's worth it. The greatest way that you can Memory, have a memory of Sister Georgette. The greatest thing that you can do today is to experience paradise. Not from an Italian restaurant. Not from a new car. Not from a new house. But by giving your life to Christ. I'll be around. I'll be here, right? If you, like, hey, I want to know more about this. I want to know what this looks like, right? Because I'm going to tell you this. If he does not have your heart, he does not have you. 
Her greatest desire was to see people surrender to the Lord. How great would it be if today we get together to remember her? You set a memorial on this day for when the Lord made you a new person. <laughs> Just give me paradise. And if that's what you're saying, you pull me to the side before we leave here today. And it will bring me nothing but joy to talk to you about what it looks like to have a relationship with the Lord. As we end our time today, I'm going to pray for us. But I want you to know that the only second promise to you is the one that just passed. But the one that's in front of you, come to Jesus while you have time. Tomorrow's not promised. I know we make plans for the future, but it's not promised. Jesus is standing with open arms ready to receive you. All you have to do is trust and obey. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, God, that you move in this moment. God, that even as we think through and process the life of our dear sister. We know you to be her father. But I'm asking you, God, that your spirit will rest here and touch the hearts and minds of her family and everyone in this room. That they will come to you. That they will trust in you. Lord, that they will um, have that same courage, Lord, that the Jailer had in Acts 16 saying, what must I do to be saved? Lord, we know that you have the power to save, God. We know, Lord, that you have the power to heal, deliver, set free, and make whole. We're asking you to move, O oh Lord, on the heart, Lord, with these, these in this room today. Father, I pray that whatever the stone is, whatever the barrier is that are in their way, remove it now. That they'll come to know you and trust you as their Savior. Father, we love you. We honor you. We adore you. And we thank you for hearing our prayer. It's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Two things, y'all, three things that we want to do real quick. We want to acknowledge two condolences if we can, because I forgot to do it earlier. Pray for me, right? One of which is from Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity, right? Um, Brother Tim Nelson, Psalm 30, verse 5. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. We, the brothers of Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity Incorporated, New Chi Chapter, in the city of East St. Louis, Illinois, are saddened to hear about the loss of your mother, Georgette Greer. We share in your loss and express our heartfelt sympathy and concern during this hour of sadness. We encourage you and your entire family to look to the hills from which cometh your help. Know that all of your help comes from the Lord. Humbly submitted by the Brotherhood of the New Chi Chapter of Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity of East St. Louis, Brother Anthony Bond um, and Brother Kevin Harbour. We also have a condolence from Faith Community Bible Church, um, and he will wipe every tear from your eye, and there will be no longer any mourning or crying or pain. The first has passed away, and he who sits on the throne said, Behold, I'm making all things new. Revelation 21, verses 4 and 5. One of the hardest things to do is to experience the passing of a loved one. You can't help but experience many difficult or many different emotions and think through all of the different things that you experience with them. But rest assured that every step of the way that God is with you and will bring you joy even in times such as these. If there's anything you need during this difficult time, please do not hesitate to reach out to us for support. We firmly believe that the church is not like a family. It is a family. And you guys are a part of ours. We're here for you emotionally, 
spiritually and physically. Humbly submitted by Faith Community Bible Church, pastors Michael Bird and Lawrence Baker, pastors. Y'all, um, so thank you um, even for those condolences. We want to let you guys know that we've prepared lunch for you guys upstairs in our fellowship hall. We want you to know that we wanted to provide an opportunity for you guys to fellowship together, to laugh a little bit, to eat a little bit, and then possibly go home and sleep a little bit, right? But, but thank you for allowing us to serve you today. Thank you for um, allowing us to experience the life um, of, of your loved one. Our lives are better because of her. She prayed often for Tim and for Monty and for Tasha. And we just want you guys to know, right, that we love you and that we're here for you. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to pray for her, and then we have some greeters out in the hall that will point you guys up to um, our fellowship hall. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, God, for the privilege that we get to celebrate you for the life of our dear sister. We're asking you today, God, to bless this family and to wrap your arms around them, God, that they will continue to not only grow in you, Lord, but for those who don't know you, may they come to you. We ask you that as they fellowship together and, and process all that's happening, we're asking you, God, to be glorified in every moment. God, I just want to thank you now for the food that we'll be receiving. We thank you, Lord, for those who cooked it, those, Lord, who will serve it, and we're just asking, Lord, to continue to open doors for this family, God, to gather and to, Lord, celebrate the goodness that you provide. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for hearing our prayer. Amen. Blessings to you guys. They'll direct you as you go out of the door. They'll direct you to the fellowship hall. Thanks.